Hi, I'm Jenny. Welcome to episode 10 of the Slowness Knitting Podcast. In this episode, I'm going to share with you my fall knitting plans. And what I'm wearing right now is a summer top that I made from my first year of knitting, which was three years ago. And I talk about this in my last episode, which is my summer capsule wardrobe, where I talk about all the tried and true favorite summer knits that I've made in the past three years. So if you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you watch that video. Okay, coming back to fall plants. It's funny that I'm filming this on the hottest day that we've had this summer. This week, the temperature went up to 42 Celsius and 107 Fahrenheit. Perfect for some woolly fall sweaters. The patterns I'll be talking about today are I'll say 80% of them are the ones that I am definitely going to be knitting up. There are two of them that I do want to knit, but I'm not sure if I'll start it this fall. They might be pushed back a little bit. Also, I have more winter plants that I didn't include just because I want to make this a little bit more realistic and reasonable. We're going to start with some very appropriate fall pieces. And they both happen to be re-knits. I'll be remaking two of the patterns that I made last fall that I love so much. I am going to make them again. Let's start with this one. This is going to be my own pattern. It's a it's the vintage lace vest that I am working on. Uh, writing up this pattern. I've talked about this in my past episode and it is um, what I expect. It is beyond my expectation that how much love this vest got. Um, a lot of people really like this pattern. So I am working on a second sample for this. Well, I haven't started. I have swatched so many different yarn combinations. This final pick is probably my fourth or fifth swatch for this project. I just could not pick one, especially because I'm writing up a pattern. I just have a lot more to consider. I want to show a second sample that is a different vibe. I am thinking about knitting a size up to show a different fit. And I also want to use yarn that is more like well-known and readily available to more people. So it's just so many things I was considering. I just cannot pick the yarn. My final pick, this is the swatch I have. Hopefully after this video, it showed me the swatch and getting our feedback. It's gonna give me more confidence and reinforcement that I needed to just start on this sample. I'm also procrastinating with the pattern just because I feel like it's a new thing. It is hard and I'm just nervous about doing it. The swatch looks quite good on camera. Uh, ignore the bottom stockinette that is smaller because I, I increased some stitches uh, from here. Oh, it does look good. I, I'm, I'm more excited now that I'm looking at the swatch. Because I want to knit a brown, still a more neutral one, this first cream color, it was so versatile. I've, I've, I've posted so many videos that little clips and reels to show how I style this. If you're not tired of it, I'll show you again. I've styled this so many different ways and this white color is just perfect. So I want to knit another neutral color so that I can pair with a lot of different things, just like the first one. So I want to use this drops brush alpaca that I have. I'm pretty sure this is the color copper. I got this like to one to two years ago. I just never got to use it. I kept trying to find a yarn to pair with it just because this brown is a very, very reddish brown, which is not my favorite. My favorite is a very yellowish warm brown. Um, so I want to find something to tone down the redness, redness in it. I paired it with knitting for olive dark brown. I'm pretty sure this is called dark brown. Uh, this is knitted for olive merino. And as, I, as you can see, no matter what yarn you're paired with, 
it does not tone down the reddish brown in this brush alpaca. It's just very pow powerful brush alpaca because it's a little thicker. It's much thicker than uh, silk mohair, so it's just more substantial. It just shows up more. So this is the swatch. Now that I'm looking at it, I am more excited and um, confident to get started on the sample. I haven't started it because I think I should finish the pattern and then actually follow my pattern to start on this second sample. That's why I haven't started it. Maybe I'll, I just need to scratch that idea and work on both at the same time, the pattern and the second sample. Um, the other thing I said I was trying to decide is whether I want to knit a size up. This one will be the smallest size in the pattern. Um, this is a pretty fitted top. I would say it probably has one, maybe two inch of two inch five centimeter of positive ease kind of fit. And I'm debating that maybe for the second sample, I want to knit a size up just to see if the grading works and also to showcase a different fit. Let me know what you think about that. So that is my first plan is a second sample of my vintage lace vest. Also, I'll think about it later. If there, there's any name that pop up to you, feel free to recommend the name for this pattern. And my second re-knit is my Luna T. I've also talked about this in past episodes of my Knitting Podcast, and I've also worn this a lot, a lot. This was definitely my favorite knit from last year. One of my favorite knit. I wore this so much. I'm pretty sure I finished it in fall, and I wore it in fall as well as in spring, and it's great in office. It's just such an amazing design. The fit, everything about it, uh, and the lightweightness of it is also perfect. Now if you look at the sample, the designer made, it's a cream color and it's slightly, slightly see-through. And from that, you can see how lightweight this top is and this sleeve length is a very elegant top. Therefore, I think this is a staple short sleeve top for me. Um, I already know that I get so much wear out of this in spring and fall, and also in winter I can layer this as well. Uh, so I want to have this in some staple colors, basic staple colors. I definitely want a cream one, but I'm first going to start with a black one. So I already got the yarn for it. Uh, I'm going to knit a black Luna tee in cashmere because I know cashmere will just make this elegant short sleeve top very timeless and comfortable to wear. Uh, the cashmere I picked is this brand that I got from China. It's called Love Yarn and it's 100% cashmere and it's 50 gram 450 meter. I am planning to hold this double. This is the thickness of the yarn. This yarn is extremely soft and the black is a pure like dark dark black. I'm planning to uh, hold this double. I got three balls of this and I think I'm just gonna follow everything I did with this first one and knit up a elegant black short sleeve top. I'm super excited about this one. So that's my second plan. Next one is the pattern that I'm most, most excited about. So I also think this is the one I'm going to cast on the soonest. It is a Jenny jacket. I'm going to knit the Jenny jacket v-neck version. Uh, when I was in Copenhagen this summer, I saw the actual Jenny jacket at a store and it was the original round neck version, but a solidified the idea for me that I definitely want to knit a jenny jacket and I want something that's exactly that color but 
the original yarn combination just uh, it just doesn't work for me just because I'm, I have very sensitive skin so I just need to be much more picky with my yarn choice and I already have my eyes on one yarn that I know will be one of the two pairing yarn and that is Isair Alpaca 2 so I know I want this to be one of the two yarn and all I need is just to pick yarn to pair with it I actually bought a few different options to see which one will work out I couldn't wait to um, swatch it to actually see what's stopping me from swatching them it's just I need to pick up these yarn so the option I, option number one I got it's also this cashmere yarn that I got from China the color is a bit lighter and I think on camera it looks even more light right now I got, it's getting washed out a little bit but it is a light khaki color and when you put them together is when you realize is this Isair yarn this is one of those natural color the color is 08 or E 8 S when you put them together you realize this this Isair yarn is actually quite cool tone it's not that warm khaki that the original jenny jacket looked like so i'm not sure if this will give me what i'm expecting the other yarn i got is uh, this brand called lotus yarn i really like this brand this is kind of the khaki color i want but it just does not go with this easier again once I put them together, you can see that the Isair is very, very cool tone. And this yarn is just very warm. I don't think these two are going to work together, but I'm curious to see what they look like. I'll still try to swatch, maybe just stock in it to see. But the more promising one is this one. I'm hoping this will work. If it doesn't work, uh, you can recommend to me. What do you think would be a good and very soft yarn and also affordable to pair with this that could make it more like the original jane jacket but that is the project that i'm most excited about and most likely this will be my first cast on once i clear off some of the whips from my needles Next one on my list is another petite knit. Believe it or not, I've never knit a, any petite knit pattern. Jan Jacket will be my first one and this will be my second. I want to knit a Maggie cardigan. But instead of short sleeve, I want to knit a long sleeve cardigan. And again, I want to knit it in a very, very wearable basic color. And I've already swatched what I came up with is this yarn. This is two comb yarn that I paired together. One is a white color, one is a light gray. And together they are making this whitish gray color. And it's extremely soft. Um, I forgot the composition of these yarn, but they're a combination of wool and um, silk and maybe a little bit of cashmere. So it's an extremely soft combination. I'm really excited for this one. The reason I want to knit Maggie Cardigan is only, only for the construction. My favorite sleeve style has always been set in sleeve, but it's very hard to find a good setting sleeve uh, pattern, especially top-down setting sleeve. Um, I'm very familiar with bottom-up setting sleeves, but I've never knitted and I also just don't see a lot top-down. When I learned that Patine Knits, Maggie Cardigan, Poppy T, and Leon Sweater, they're all this top-down construction, but it's a setting sleeve. It's not saddle shoulder. And it's this construction where the sleeves are picked up as you pick up the front panel. It's just a very unique construction that I have not tried yet. So I really want to learn that and add that to my skills. So that's the main reason I want to knit the Maggie cardigan. Um, although last night I am uh, 
debating again whether I actually want to knit it just because I usually don't knit plain stockinette cardigans or sweaters. They just seem too boring to me. But I do need a basic cardigan and I do want to learn this construction so I think I'll do it. But I refuse to knit this pattern as my first petite knit pattern just because it's so basic and plain and boring. That's why I have to start my Jen jacket first and then do this one. <laughs> Next one that's on my list is one that I have put on my queue on Ravelry for maybe almost a year. I've always had this on my queue and I've always had this type of cardigan on my dream knit list. It's an all-over color work cardigan. The original pattern I put on my dream knit list is the flower cardigan by Seniscar. I think you've probably seen this pattern quite a bit. Um, I want to knit a cardigan like that, but not necessarily this motif because I think this floral motif they have, I still like it. I just think I want something that's a little more than that. So I found the perfect one when I saw this pattern. This is a free pattern by Yarbo. I think Yarbo has a lot of great quality free patterns. I already have the pattern. It's a free download and um, the designer's little note about the idea with this design, the inspiration, it's also very beautiful. Of course, the, these original colors, like the mustard yellow with cream color, is great. I love it. But I thought I would get tired of mustard yellow because I already have too many things that's mustard yellow. I already feel like I'm getting a little tired of it. So I thought I would do a cream and warm brown. Until recently, I sold up this dress. And one day, I was wearing this dress with my Birkenstock and I took a photo like this and I was so inspired by this color combination. So I decided that I am going to knit a floral, all over floral color cardigan in this color vibe. And what I have so far look like this. This is the what I came up with based on this inspo photo from me. This is the yarn I showed you earlier that I thought about pairing with the Isair, but it does not work with the Isair. But with this blue, isn't that beautiful? Isn't this a great combination? Isn't this kind of what the inspo look like? The only problem is this blue is a, it's a pairing yarn. It's a brushed, um, what is this again? This one is a brushed um, cashmere and lace. This is a cashmere lace yarn. And it's quite thin. It's a, it's more of a pairing kind of yarn. And the only blue yarn I have right now is this Knitting for Olive Dusty Aqua that I got. Uh, this is Knitting for Olive Merino. So to, to right now is actually the first time me putting them together and looking at them. I think I am going to, just because these are already uh, ready to knit, I don't need to kick them up. So I think I am going to swatch these two together to see what kind of blue it gives me. If it works, I'm going to use this as the main color and this as the contrast color and knit the Car Home cardigan. I'm very, very, very excited about this one. This is the one that is slightly lower on my ready to cast on list just because it's a little bit more complicated and I'm not completely set on the yarn choice. But I'm super, super excited about this one. And last one that is on my list is a whip. It is my book club cardigan. I'm going to put this on and show you. I'm actually very surprised how popular this pattern is. I feel like when I'm just browsing on YouTube, I see so many people talking about knitting this one, already knit up this one. 
I am actually, I was a test knitter, but I could not finish this. So this has been all my needles before my trip, my summer trip. So I had this on my needles in April and I put it put it away ever since I ever since summer hit. I just brought this back out and I'm very, very, very excited to continue with this one. I've already talked about this in my episode, past episode. I actually just went back to that episode to see what needle size I use, but I was a terrible podcaster and I did not mention I am using four millimeter needles for this one. And the yarn I'm using is Cascade Eco Merino DK. The color is Doe Skin. And this is where I'm at right now. This is a stitch marker. I think it's looking great. I'm very happy with how this look right now. I think the progress I have so far is pretty it's pretty promising. I can just keep going. At this point, I'm pretty sure there's no more increases or anything and I can look at the pattern and know what the next row should look like. So it should be a little bit more smooth sailing from here. So I'm just excited to keep working on this one finish this. This yarn, I've mentioned it in that last episode, it is not very, very soft. Even though it's merino, it's not very soft, but it's also not scratchy. It just feels like more rough. It's kind of like a rope kind of feeling. Uh, but I think this kind of more stiff and rough yarn is a little bit better for a cable design. That's why I picked this one, even though when I look at other people's very soft looking book club cardigan. I still am a little jealous that they have a very soft one. Now this is the last one. This is number six on my fall knitting plan list. Now I have two extra honorable mentions that are both for sure on my queue, but I'm just not sure if I will cast them on this fall just because I have a lot already. The first one is something I already swatched. It's the Barbro blouse. I have mentioned this in my Europe yarn haul. I tried on the Barbro blouse in the Knitting for Autumn store and I fell in love with it. Um, so I was very, very excited to get started on this one. But just because it's more of a warmer weather knit, and I'm just too excited to get on my more sweater sweater knits now. That's why I, even though I swatched this, I don't think I want to um, start on this one. So I feel like this might get pushed to next spring, but I know that I do want to knit up a Barbara blouse. And the last honorable mention is also something I have had on my queue for maybe two years. And I even bought the pattern. I even joined a knit along group chat. It's the Kutova Kika knit along hosted by two Instagrammers. I want to knit the Arctic light sweater. And I've already picked out my yarn. I think I'm going to knit it in Isayer Eco Soft. This is 56% alpaca, 44% cotton, and it's 50 gram, 125 meter. And this color is E7S. So it is a long yarn, very similar to Drops Air kind of vibe. I have not swatched this, um, I've also never used this. If you have used this and have any experience, tips or tricks to share, please share with me. Also share with me what you think about knitting the Arctic Light sweater in this yarn. This is something, again, I know for sure I want to knit, but it's just not the top six on my list right now. Even though I'm in a knit along. Knit along. I don't know, maybe I just need to swatch after I swatch. I might get more excited and move this up the list. So that is everything on my fall to knit list. 
Right now, I'm going to quickly share with you two projects that are currently on my needles. Two sweater projects. And they're the reason that I kind of get started on any of the patterns I mentioned today. I just really need to finish these two up. The first one is this color work sweater I mentioned it in my last podcast episode. This is a free drops pattern. This is a pattern, this is a pretty old pattern from the 90s, I think. So this is back when they didn't even really have names. This sweater is literally just called Sweater with Squares. I have finished the body, a steeped armhole, I put on the collar, and I have finished one sleeve already. I am on my second sleeve right now. This is what the sleeve looked like. And I have also showed you last time uh, how great this looks as a vest currently. I already started on my second sleeve and I've done the finishing touch so literally all I need is to finish up the sleeve and attach it to the body. So yeah, the reason I stopped was because I ran out of yarn, this main color. I just got the yarn two days ago. So I am going to get back to this one, hopefully finish this one first. And my second whip is something I casted on last week. And this whole week, I've only been knitting on this one just because I wasn't sure if this is working. So I just kept knitting more to see if it works. It's another one of those dream knits. I really want a gingham sweater. I like Jessie Maid's Great Gingham Racklin. I like it a lot. But I do think there are a few concerns for me. One is the fit and the other one is its bottom up raglan. And I'm just not that interested in a bottom up raglan. So I decided to just play with it and do my own raglan design. And I've always wanted to use this yarn for the raglan that I have in my head. I'll show you the yarn. This is a very, very cool yarn that I just stumbled upon in Porto, Portugal last year. I'll put the brand name here. I believe it's an Italian brand. And this is a 50% Merino, 50%. They call it microfiber, but I'm guessing it's just some kind of um, synthetic fiber. And they put it in the most interesting presentation format. I've never seen yarn like this. It looks very cool, looks very impressive, but it's a little bit of pain to actually use the yarn. It's basically seven mini hank that got linked together. And uh, because this yarn is a gradient color, so I thought I always had the idea that maybe I would use this as a gingham design and then the gingham will just gradually change color. And the reason why I thought this would look great as a gingham is because the color is already interwoven. It's like, a, it's not a two ply, it's a four ply, but the gradient came from different color got plied together. So I had the idea of this being a gingham sweater, but once I got started, it is different from my expectation. That's why I could not put this down. I, I need to knit more to see if it's working. Um, the yarn I paired with the main color, this taupey color that you're looking at, is the other yarn that I got, uh, a potential one that I was thinking maybe go pair together with the Isayer for Jenny Jacket. But as you can see, it's a very taupey color. It did not work. So I, and I realized this worked with this because they're both cool tone colors. And I got started and I knit it nonstop for a week. This is what it looked like right now. Put it on. On this 40 degree, 100 plus degree Fahrenheit weather to show you. This is what it looked like right now. Let me know what you think. Is it working? Is it not working? I still haven't decided. But yeah, there you go. Here is my fall knitting plan. 
please, please, please let me know and share with me what are your fall knitting plans. And if you have any comments, advice on any of the patterns and or any of the yarn that I mentioned today, please, please share with me. Thank you for watching. Happy knitting. I'll see you next time. Bye.